question I gave you on your test, and you could do it in like a minute, maybe less. Because I say, find me the equation of the tangent line through this curve at the point 2 comma 4. Can you do it? Yeah, at 2 comma 4, here's your slope, right? Plug in 2, you get a slope of 4. Now you have a point and you have a slope, it's very quick. Very, very nice. So on the test, are you ever going to tell us to do that? Yeah, probably once, to make sure you can do it. Yeah, but after that, no, it takes way too long, especially for, for things like this. I mean, honestly, that's just ridiculous. Even though it's very simple, that's ridiculous when it comes to this stuff. You don't want to expand that. You don't want to do that. I'm guessing a whole lot of you are probably not going to come to me for binomial expansion anymore since you don't have to do those for crazy big numbers. Can you take the derivative of x to the fifth? How much is it? Okay. To the fourth. Good. We bring down the five x to the, subtract 1 from that exponent, you get to the fourth power. That's the derivative. Very nice, very quick. If you did it this way, would it work out? Yes, absolutely. It's just going to take you a whole long time. Here's one you definitely don't want to do. DDS of s to the 15th. Notice one thing on the notation. Do you notice how this has to change with the variable that I have? So it's not ddx anymore, it's dds, derivative with respect to s, and then I'll give you the variable, so s to the 15. Uh, what's this one? Sure, very quick, very, very fast. Now there are a couple things that we, we should be able to do as well. What would happen if I gave you, did the shiny just wear off the calculus? Did it make it less cool somehow, that it's easier? Or did it make it like awesome, this is so not bad? It's going to get worse. I mean, it's, it's going to get worse. <laughs> for, this is the clarification. This yeah. is the calm before the storm. Yeah, this is like the eye of the hurricane, all right? You made it through the outskirts, and then you're like, ah, it's sunny. I like this. little mist, maybe, to cool you off, and then I'll pound you again later. But for right now, take a breath. Can you do it with negatives? Yeah. Of course. Yes, absolutely you can. What you do with the, the negative, what's it, what's it going to become? What's the derivative of x to the, by the way, this is showing you work, all right? You don't have to show me any more work than this. What's the derivative of x to the negative third? What happens to the negative 3? So you still have to do that, negative 3. x to the, wait, wait, not negative 2. <coughs> negative 3 minus 1, yeah, that's negative 4. So this is negative 3 x to the negative 4. You'd be surprised how many people mess that up, all right? Watch your signs very carefully. If you're subtracting, make sure you actually are subtracting. Um, we'll, do, we'll do a couple more. How about this? Do you want us to write out like that or move the exponent to the denominator? Oh, you can do this as well. Generally, generally, I'll tell you, if I've given it to you this way, leave it this way. That's fine. If I've given it to you as the other way, give it to me the other way. Okay. That's the general rule. If you want to write like this all the time, that's fine as well. How about that one? What's that going to be? Negative 2 comes down. Great. P to the what? Oops. Okay. You know what, I'm going to move this one over there so you see it better. This is kind of an important one, actually. What about ddx 1 over x? Is it 1 over x, uh, sorry, 1 over what do you do with that? Is it 1 over 1? You just take the derivative of x. Can you do that? Move the x quadrant in front of x, which is 1 up to the top. Uh -huh. Make it a negative x quadrant. So we have to move this so that it fits that format. Are you with me? Right now it doesn't. So somehow you've got to change it to make it fit that. If we do that, sure, now it becomes a negative 1. Now you can take the derivative because it fits our x to the n format. We'll bring down the negative 1. 
Negative two. X to the what? Two. Two or negative two? Negative two. You're subtracting one from it, negative two. And then because I gave it this way, change it back. We're going to have negative one over x squared. That's the derivative. You okay with this so far? By the way, what's the derivative <coughs> of just x? One. one. Some people said x and people said one. More than one. What's the exponent right now? One. It is one, right? So what would happen here is you'd bring down the one, you'd have x to the one minus one, wouldn't you? What's x to the one minus one? Zero. So you'd have one times x to the zero. What's x to the zero? One. So this is 1 times 1, or 1. The derivative of x is 1. In fact, if you think about this, think. Think for a second. Understand that's the most basic of all linear equations, yes? What, what, where we have a non-horizontal. It's x to the first power. What's the slope of this line? One. Derivative means slope, doesn't it? So the derivative would also be 1. That's, you can show it with the general power rule now. How many of you feel okay so far with this? All right, another little thing we can do. It's kind of cool. This opens up a whole lot of doors for us. So, another note. If you ever have a constant times a function, that could be anything in there. What we can do with derivatives is take that constant and move it up in front of our derivative. It doesn't apply to it. So this is the same thing as c times the derivative of f of x. If c is a constant, so for make sure you, you know that c is a constant number, it doesn't change as a number like 3 or negative 2 or pi. But if we haven't been multiplied by that function, we can pull that side. I can see a couple examples of this. How about the derivative of 5x to the fourth power? Do I have a constant in there being multiplied by a function? Yeah, 5 is being multiplied by x to the fourth. Remember, we, we kind of want to make it fit that thing, right? Because that's, oh, that's the only thing we know right now. So that's about it. So you know you can make this 5 times the derivative of x to the fourth. We can take that constant number and multiply it by the, the derivative of the function itself. So what's the derivative of x to the fourth power, please? Don't forget about the 5. But then you have 4x, sure, to the third power. Now you can do the 5 times 4. How much are you going to get? 20. Yeah, sure. Now, look. Practically, can you get 20x to the third from here? Yeah. Absolutely. You bring down the 4, you multiply it times the 5, you're going to get the 20, right? Are you following me on that? <laughs> Haven't out, outpaced you yet? No. All right, cool. If you bring down the 4, which you know you're going to be doing, multiply it by the constant term, you're going to get the 20, and then subtract 1 from the 4. You're still going to get 20x to the third power. How about the derivative of negative x to the seventh power? What do you think? What can we do? Do we have a constant in there? Yes. So we could pull that constant out of that negative, then take the derivative of x to the seventh. Can you take the derivative of x to the seventh? Yeah. All of you should be able to at this point, right? So we can do that, but basically I'm showing this to let you know that if we can pull the constant outside of it, you can just multiply it by the exponent. So in our case right here, can you tell me the answer with just doing negative, the, the derivative of negative x to the seventh? What are we going to get? Sure. You know that's a constant. You'll be multiplying it later. Negative 1, that's a negative 1, times positive 7, that's negative 7. x to the sixth power, and you're done. That's your derivative there. How about, let's do one last one.
the derivative of pi over x squared. Pi over x squared. What do you think? Is it pi over 2x? Pi over 2x. Can you do that? Can you do pi over 2x? That doesn't fit, right? That doesn't fit the, the power rule that I gave you just a minute ago. It doesn't fit that. What would you have to do to the x squared before you can do that stuff? Just what you did here. Put it in. Same thing you did that. You got to make it this format. Otherwise, you can't touch it. So <coughs> right here, we got to say, all right, well, I know that this is the same thing as dx pi x to the negative 2. Are you with me on that? Or no? Move your negative, move your exponents up, make them negative. That way you can use that power rule that I showed you. Otherwise, you can't do it. This in no way is equal to pi over 2x. You can't just can't do that. <clears throat> now, what, what's next? What do you think? Pull out pi. We could pull out the pi if you wanted to, or you could leave it in there if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. If you pull out the pi, you'll have pi times d dx of x to the negative 2. Now can you take the derivative of x to the negative 2? Yeah, now it fits, right? Now you can do it. You can pull down the negative 2, take 1 away from that exponent, you're going to get the negative 2 x to the negative 3, and then multiply by the pi. By the way, stop for a second. You know how I told you the derivative of a constant <coughs> is always 0? A lot of people ask later, well, wait, wait a second. If the derivative of a constant is always 0, why don't we get a 0 here? Why don't we do that? Well, that's actually connected to something with a variable, right? If you have a constant by itself, like the derivative of pi, that was 0. However, because we have a, a constant being connected to that, that variable, we can pull that outside by multiplication. So basically it just hangs around and says, no, it's not 0. Uh, I will show you that, yes, a derivative of the constant, it is 0. Uh, but if you did that, you'd have to show something called the product rule here. I'll talk about that in the next section. But for right now, you go, OK, well, wait. A derivative of a constant by itself. Yes, zero. As soon as you connect it to a variable, that now is just a constant being multiplied by that variable. You can pull it out front, you can use that rule that I showed you, then take the derivative of the function and multiply it back. Does that make sense? Otherwise, all of your derivatives would end up being zero. And that would say, I can say the slope of everything is zero. That's not true. <laughs> so here you have the pi times, well, you all told me it was negative 2, x to negative 3. We bring it down, we subtract 1. And if you really wanted to kind of pretty this thing up a little bit, you'd make it negative 2 pi over x cubed. Do you see how to get to the negative 2 pi over x cubed? Nudge your head if you can. You feel all right with that? OK, and that's our derivative. Could you have got there directly from, from here? Sure, sure. You bring down that negative 2, that's the negative 2 times pi. x to the negative 3, you can do that. By the way, a couple of nice little little rules for us. Just like we could do with limits, you see, when we're finding derivatives, we're actually finding limits, right? With limits, you can pull constants out. With limits, you can separate by addition and subtraction, true? You can do the same thing here. If you have the derivative of a couple functions being added or subtracted, That's the same thing as a derivative of the first function. Plus or minus using subtraction, the derivative of the second.